Charlie's Pets by Katherine Ernst, illustrated by Arthur Cummings. So if you look at this book, this is a really old book. Look at it. Oof. A little, little yucky on the inside. Charlie's Pets by Katherine Ernst, illustrated by Arthur Cummings. Also by Katherine Ernst, Owl's New Cards, Mr. Tamarin's Trees. And if you look in this section, you can see that there's a date, 19. 78. And that's when this book was written. This book is older than I am. This book is also probably older than your parents. To Matthew Ernst, my very favorite animal expert, with lots of love. Dirt powder. Zing. Water solvent. Charlie figured his mother wouldn't like it. Neither would his father. But he didn't care. He had never been allowed to have a pet. And the moment he saw them under the kitchen sink, he knew they were the answer. They don't shed, he thought. They don't bark. They don't scratch. They don't have to go outside. They don't cost any money. They're the most wonderful pets I've ever thought of, said Charlie. So he built them a house out of a large glass jar. Then he hid them in his room. One day, Charlie's sister was looking for a ball under Charlie's bed. What's that? She shouted. Shh, said Charlie. That's my roach house. Your roach house? His sister screamed. Are you crazy? Stop yelling, said Charlie. They're my pets. Charlie, his sister said. Roaches are disgusting. So roaches, cucaracha, cockroaches. He's got, he's, he's keeping them as pets because he's not allowed to have a pet. They are not, said Charlie. They're very interesting. You'd be surprised how interesting they are. Oh yeah, said his sister. Just try to tell that to mom. She's going to kill you. Do you think she'll be really mad? Asked Charlie. Are you kidding? Just don't let her see them. That's all I've got to say. You're right, said Charlie. That night, Charlie hid his roaches in the top shelf of his closet next to his set of broken racing cars. Don't make any noise, he said as he closed the door. We have to be very careful. Every night that week, Charlie took his roaches down from the shelf when everyone thought he was asleep. He put water in the jar with an eyedropper and fed them tang and granola he had saved from breakfast. He also watched them very carefully. You're going to see here, this is an eyedropper. You've maybe used an eyedropper in science class before. And um, tang is something that's not very popular anymore, but it was very popular in the 70s. And it was kind of um, uh, this orange powder and you would put it with water and it would make kind of something that kind of tasted like orange juice. It was like fake orange juice. And granola is like cereal. The first thing he noticed was that they never made any noise, but they did seem to talk to one another by waving their antennae. They also look different from one another. So he's making observations. This is kind of like a science experiment. He's observing the cockroaches and he's noticed that they wiggle their antennas and perhaps they have a language that they use to communicate to each other or talk to each other. Albert, for instance, was light brown with long silky antennae. To Charlie, he looked like a wealthy nobleman who ordered lots of people around. Gloria reminded him of a track star. She was small, thin, and very quick. But the one Charlie liked best was King Kong. King Kong was the biggest, fattest, 
healthiest roach Charlie had ever seen. Go King! Charlie cheered as King Kong ran up and down the jar, pushing the other roaches out of the way. His book says, Insects We Love. Charlie liked his pets so much that he read a lot about them. He learned that roaches have been on Earth for 400 million years, and they were the first animals to fly. He also learned that there were, are about 2,000 different kinds on the Earth today, but only a few live around people. I wonder why everybody hates them, thought Charlie, but he couldn't think of an answer. You see, there's little cockroaches, and they're with the dinosaurs because cockroaches lived back then. Cockroaches have been living longer than humans. Then one evening, Charlie's mother said, Boy, if it's not one thing, it's another. What now? asked Charlie's father. Roaches, said his mother. The whole apartment's crawling in them. Yuck, said Charlie's sister. Call the exterminator, said his father. I already did, said his mother. He's coming in the morning. Charlie stared at his plate and felt as though his food was stuck in his throat. After dinner, he went into his room, closed the door, and took his roaches down from the closet. He sat on the floor and patted the jar. What am I going to do, he said. You won't be safe anywhere. Just then, Charlie's mother opened the door. Charlie tried to hide the jar, but it was too late. She had already seen them. What in heaven's name is that? She said, Ah, uh, it's my... Charlie, are those roaches? What are you doing with those roaches? They're my pets, Charlie whispered. Pets, said his mother. They're dirty, awful things. No, they're not, said Charlie. You think all pets are dirty. They're disgusting. Charlie felt shaky and scared, but he stuck out his chin and said, They aren't any dirtier than people. I don't care, said his mother. Get them out of the house. I knew you'd say that, said Charlie. You don't understand. Yes, I do, said his mother, and I want those roaches out of here in the morning. So the next morning, Charlie put his roach house in his lunchbox and took it to school. That night at dinner, Charlie didn't finish his french fries, and he wouldn't eat dessert. He wished his mother understood how fond he, was, he had become of his pets. He wished he had a pet. What did you do with those roaches? His mother asked. Charlie didn't answer. I want to know what you did with those roaches. I took them to school, said Charlie in a quiet voice. What? said his mother. You can't keep them at school. Oh, yes, I can, said Charlie. Miss Downey said they would make a lovely science project. We're going to study them all year. So there. Charlie threw down his napkin, went into his room, and slammed the door. He spent the rest of the evening drawing pictures of King Kong and all the other pets he wished he had. See, here's a snake. This says crayons. This is a cat. This is I'm not quite sure. Looks like a dog or a bear. And this is this is maybe King Kong. The next morning, when Charlie's mother called him for breakfast, he said he wasn't hungry. He could still smell the bug spray, and it made him feel sick. At lunchtime, Charlie's mother knocked on the door. May I come in? She asked. No, said Charlie. Please, she said. Go away, said Charlie. But I have something for you, she said, and she opened the door. Charlie looked up. His mother was carrying two baby rabbits in a cage. One was all black and the other was all white. They were both very fluffy and their no noses twitched. Gee, said Charlie, are those for me? Yes, said his mother. They're beautiful, said Charlie. I hope you can like them as much as your roaches, said his mother. 
My roaches were nice, you know. I know you cared about them, said his mother. I still do, said Charlie, but they're happy in school. He took the cage from his mother and put it on his desk. We're going to teach them how to go through a maze, he said. I bet, I bet they'll like that. I think he's talking about the cockroaches. I bet they will, said his mother. Charlie opened the cage and patted his rabbits. I think I'll call them Harry and Tom, he said. The end.